What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth. This is EJ Joyful Plans and we are on episode number two of Happy Planner 101, Back to Basics, um, just everything that you might need to know about the Happy Planner if you are new to the Happy Planner. This really is a series that I'm trying to do for my friends and unknown friends out there that are wondering what all the hype is about, what is the Happy Planner, what are all the things, why are people into it. Um, we're starting really with the basics with this series and I do have a playlist. I'll link it down below where I'll put all of these episodes. Episode one was like introduction to the Happy Planner and Happy Planner sizes and discs. Today we're talking about the layouts, specifically planner layouts. So Amanda had pointed out in my last video, I didn't talk about the micro size, which is uh, a lot smaller, a lot, lot smaller. It is four discs, um, but that really falls under journals. So I will be doing journals and notebooks in a separate video. This is just layouts for planners. So without further ado, let's get into Happy Planner 101, back to basics. Let's talk about the layouts. I will say that some layouts have come and gone. So I'm going to try to cut this down to what I believe are like the top eight most commonly seen layouts. And then we'll talk about some specialty layouts, which ironically, I think I only have one specialty. So I would say there are about eight traditional Happy Planner layouts that uh, throughout the year, you'll be able to find these. And that's what we're going to talk about. At the end, I'll show, if I can, I'll show pictures of the specialty layouts. So let's get into the layouts. First and foremost here, we have the vertical layout. This is the most popular, the most common, and it is as it seems, okay, or as it's labeled. It is a vertical planner, meaning the days of the week go across the top, and then the idea is that you're planning vertically. You're going down as the day progresses. You can do a couple things with this. You can have each row represent morning, uh, like midday, afternoon, and evening. So you could divide your tasks or um, like food, whatever. You could divide it by time of day, or you could divide it by area of your life that you are organizing. So most folks, when I see planning in a vertical on Instagram, they're kind of, they don't focus on the rows so much as the vertical element of it. But I am proposing that as an idea uh, in case you're looking at this and wondering what can you do with it. You can go vertical because it is a vertical planner, but don't forget that you can also go this way as well and do morning, midday, and evening. This is an undated planner, meaning it is completely blank and you would have to add dates up at the top, the month up at the top, so that you can make it um, dated for the week that you're using it. So this is the vertical planner. This is a little bit older, so these lines here are a bit thicker. In the newer iteration of the vertical, these lines are a lot thinner. And depending on the planner that you pick, there might also be different splotches of color or different font. So keep that in mind. The design of the page might be different based on the planner. But again, we're talking about the function of the layout. So this is a vertical planner. The next layout that we see a lot of is a horizontal. This reminds me of like junior high and high school. The old school planners were all horizontal. This to me is the most traditional planner uh, planner style, and yet it's not the most popular uh, the vertical is, which I think is really interesting. Um, I love this layout for journaling when you have more writing to do, and when it comes to decorating, it might be a bit overwhelming looking at this layout if you've gotten accustomed to um, decorative planning in a vertical, but my tip is to look at these horizontal pages or sections um, as if there are vertical lines dividing them. And so when you cut the, these sections in half and think about balancing decor uh, based on imaginary vertical lines, this gets a lot easier to decorate. But because this has lines, this is a great planner for someone that does a lot of writing and is willing to play around with um, decor. So that is the horizontal layout. 
The next layout is the dashboard layout. To me, this is the best entry point into the Happy Planner. I know most people start with a vertical, but I actually think the dashboard's probably the most helpful because most people, when they're organizing their lives, there's some sort of to-do list. And by having the left page custom kind of constructed separate from the, the daily planning, you've got a lot of room to organize your life. So there are, again, different styles of this. This is um, the homebody style. So, you know, these are in color. There is a colored box here and a colored box here, but you can find more neutral versions of this. This has been pre labeled as to buy, errands, important, and focus. Those are easy things to cover up. And we've seen different iterations of the headers over different um, different generations of dashboard. Again, this is a dashboard layout and really, really, really great if you like to-do lists, especially if you're someone who would prefer organizing your life with to-do lists than someone who has a lot of appointments and meetings and commitments on specific days of the week. If you have a lot of daily assigned tasks, then you might want two pages of, of daily planning. But if you're someone that just has one or two things a week assigned to specific days, then having a to-do list take up a whole page is going to be more beneficial to you. So this is the dashboard layout. It is one of my absolute favorites. The next layout that is one of my absolute favorites is the subject layout. It's, sub, it's called subject or a teacher layout. So you often will see these over the summer as a new academic year approaches. This is a teacher layout or a subject layout because the days of the week fall vertically in the margin, Monday through Friday. And at the top, you've got seven, four, five, six, seven, yes, seven sections for different subjects or different um, areas that a teacher might be teaching on. So this could be science, math, PE, or however, whatever subject are. You could do homework, tests and quizzes. The idea is that for each day, you might have several topics that you need to cover, and this accounts for that. I love using this layout because it's lined and because you can plan horizontally or vertically. So a number of videos you'll see on my channel, Plan With Me's. I'm not a teacher, but I use this layout because I just like the grid look of it. And what I do is I white out Monday through Friday because I need Monday through Sunday. I'll add Monday through Sunday up here. And then this, this just becomes um, either decorative and I plan vertically or you can have different subjects go on each row and you can go horizontally that way. So don't, don't feel like you have to use the planner that is assigned to the type of person that you are. Just because you're not a teacher doesn't mean you can't use this layout if you liked being able to go horizontally or vertically and you like lines. Or um, don't feel like if you're a teacher, you have to use this layout because this might not be helpful for you. So this is the teacher slash subject layout. The next layout is the color block layout or student layout. And it's very similar in that you see that kind of grid pattern going this way where you can have different subjects across you know, if you're a student and you have five classes, maybe you would write down each class here and then put your assignments for each day going this way. They've also um, put together the Saturday and Sunday for homework and assignments and whatnot. Um, and I like that they've, they've set aside Saturday and Sunday. It looks different than the rest of, of the planner. So I have been using this intermittently for work because I work Monday through Friday and I've been widening out this line and it's become like a general notes section at the office. So that is another way that you can use this layout if you are not a teacher or excuse me, a student. So again, this is the student slash color block layout and the color blocks will change depending on the planner. I like this one because it was super neutral. The next planner is, and this is new, we used to be able to purchase these individual daily planning sheets, but the Happy Planner now has 
a undated four months at a time daily planner. And it looks like this. Right now it's the Papillon planner. So there is a butterfly on here. Um, but this really is for someone that has a lot going on or just likes to brain dump and get all the things going on uh, for the day down on one piece of paper. So if you have more going on and you have a lot to organize, then a daily planner might be for you. This is what the daily currently looks like. Um, there, we've seen several versions of this, but this is the layout that we're seeing for the planner. You've got your top three priorities, a dot grid section for reminders, two shaded boxes, a today a bullet kind of checklist section, today's focus, and a couple lines for self-care. So again, that is the daily layout. The next is the monthly layout. This is one of my favorites. Again, it's very different from anything else that the Happy Planner has, and it's very easy to Franken-plan. Franken-planning I'll go through in another video, but um, this is really great to add to other planners if you need more space. The monthly layout features a dashboard, like double-sided dashboard spread at the front of every month where you can mark your goals. You've got monthly uh, to-dos, note to self, a big open section of dot grid, top three priorities, and a place where you can put where you're, what you're thankful for. Over here, we've got three habit trackers for the month. So this is like your landing page for the month. This planner also comes with the monthly layout, traditional monthly layout, so you have that. So you have the monthly layout, then you get the monthly dashboard, and then instead of weekly pages, you get like a perpetual to-do list of daily tasks. You get sheets of daily tasks. You get four of these sheets. The idea is that one cluster is one day. So uh, you just, and you would have to label it. It's essentially undated other than the month up at the top. So this is really great. If you like this layout of checklists, then honestly, you could take the daily tasks and add them to your current planner to the back of your planner where you just, you know, have your checklist. So I love that this can be used for anything. If you wanna journal in here and ignore the, the dots, the checklist, you can do that. Uh, I've been using this for health and wellness. So this is where I track my fitness stats for each day. And it's it's great. So I love, I love that the monthly has a dashboard and then just an ongoing daily task sheet. The Happy Planner doesn't put out a ton of monthly planners every year, so you're kind of stuck with the design that that they um, put out. Right now, I think there's one for 2022 that I think is a mom planner, so the dashboards are mom-related. This super neutral one uh, is an 18-month planner, so this will go through 2022, which I'm really excited for. The final layout that I'm going to consider kind of a standard uh, that we've seen is uh, we'll talk about it in two different ways. It's the the line vertical or the hourly vertical. So the hourly vertical is going to be a vertical planner, but it's going to have times from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. two thirds of of the um, of the page. So if you go back and remember what the vertical layout looks like where you've got three sections that are completely empty. That vertical hourly has these two sections as lined. So that's a lined vertical. And then this is a hourly lined vertical with the time from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Monday and Thursday. These other elements with these um, bullet thingies, <laughs> these checklists, this is unique to this particular extension pack. But the concept again, is you've got your three sections like it's a vertical, only two of them are lined and hourly. So those are the eight, eight to nine-ish layouts that I think are standard for the Happy Planner. We're talking they're not, they're not focused on any specific area of somebody's life. Um, now we're gonna talk about specialty planners. Now the Happy Planner has a lot of these actually, almost the same number of specialty planners as they do traditional layouts. And I only have one of them. So let's start with the one that I have. The one that I have is a fitness planner. So we will start with the fitness planner. 
so the fitness planner is just as it sounds. All the dividers are going to be very sporty and, you know, inspirational. But this is the fitness layout. So the top section says today. The middle section says focus. And then the lower, I'd say almost two-thirds, is a food log and exercise. So if you're someone that really wants an inspirational um, fitness focus, place to log your food, etc., type of planner, then the fitness planner is the one for you. And, and these are consistently in the Happy Planners um, releases. So the fitness planner is a standard, and this is what the layout looks like. This is one of the most neutral ones they've done. Typically, one of these boxes is shaded in a color, but this time we see a super neutral spread. It is vertical, but you've got the subjects or the categories of um, log on the side. So for the rest of the planners, I'm going to insert a picture right above and just talk about it um, from here because I actually don't have them. So the next planner that is new in popularity or new to the happy planner really is the recovery planner. And it is essentially a modified dashboard. The left page is kind of that dashboard style where you've got some healthy prompts and identifying healthy habits for the week. You've got a place for um, to-dos and notes and a weekly check-in. The right page, like a traditional dashboard, has your daily blocks and you've got space to write something down every day and little daily feelings check-ins in the um, uh, on that left side of every, every day. And then the upper uh, left on that right side has a daily gratitude section. So again, they've taken the dashboard layout and really focused it on uh, healthy habits, self-care and recovery. The next planner that is very common, uh, I would say the faith and, and the fitness planners are the most common of the specialty that we've seen along with budget, but we'll get there. The faith planner is a vertical lined planner that is split into three sections with headers. So uh, they follow the SOAP method. So there's scripture reading keywords in the top section. The second section is the observation and the third section is the application. I've seen folks use this for faith and I've seen folks use this for a vertical lined planner. If you want lines through the whole um through the whole column, you can very easily recategorize the SOAP method headers and make that exactly what you want it to be. The next planner that we've seen very consistently from the Happy Planner is the Budget Planner. So um, this has a variety of things that you can track, not just in your weekly expenses, but some kind of top of the month um, tracking for income, income and, and expenses. It's broken down, um, that left side is broken down into categories for housing, food, utilities, personal, transportation, entertainment, medical, other, etc. cetera. And uh, you're able to log what the amount is and then check, check mark if it's cleared your bank account. The right page is a savings tracker and an account activity tracker. And there is a different budget related challenge um, on that right margin. In this case, it's a no spend. So the rest of this planner, when you get into the weeklies, is basically a transaction log of, of your expenses, your weekly expenses. So this truly is for budgeting. You're not going to find a lot of space for to-do lists uh, in other areas of your life. One of the most I'd say popular, but only been done twice, I think, is the checklist layout, otherwise known as the Miss Maker layout. And it features a vertical layout, but it's spiced up a little bit. You've got dot grid in the top section. The center section has bulleted uh, checklists, and then it's blank white at the bottom. This one is very difficult to find. They don't release it very often, but... If you are able to get it, I think that you'll enjoy that there's pre-printed checklists in that center section. However, if you can't find it, it's a vertical. It's a vertical and you can draw your own dots in that center section, your own uh, 
task lists in the center section if, if you're really jonesing for that Miss Maker checklist planner that you can't find. Brand new to the Happy Planner as a planner, uh, we've seen recipe books from the Happy Planner, but meal planning is a new uh, planner from the Happy Planner. It is a, in my opinion, a modified teacher layout. So you've got that same grid style with breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, and then big section down at the bottom for ingredients to prep. And this planner is cool because it does have additional pages for recipes and grocery lists. The last layout that I'm seeing that is also brand new to the Happy Planner is the sewing layout or the sewing planner. This essentially is a dashboard layout, but the planner itself has several pages at the front of the planner that have to do with like sewing tips and tricks. That, my friend, is a summary to the best of my ability with the knowledge that I have as of today. And I'm just gonna tell you, it is, let me look at the date. It is Thursday, November 11th, 2021. I am uh, not, on the inside as far as new planner layouts that are coming out in the future. But I can say that this is my best roundup. Um, from what I can see, we've got about eight traditional layout styles. And then we've seen a lot of specialty planners come out in the last year. Um, and I'd categorize about um, seven as being specialty or specific to a niche. Uh, if you have any questions about Happy Planner or Happy Planner layouts, I am so like jazzed to talk about it. I would love to help you out. I'd love to answer any questions that you have. Leave your comments and questions down below. And I know that many of you who watch this video are Happy Planner experts. And I'm sure that you would be happy to chime in if, if anybody has a comment as well. Let's just engage in dialogue in, in the comments together. Come hang out with me over on Instagram. My handle is ejjoyful underscore plans. It is always a good time. And if you haven't done so and you are interested in following along my journey as a member of the Happy Planner Squad or just my journey on social media and posting videos about my planner life, my organization life, um, then I do hope that you will subscribe to my channel. Until next time, friends, God bless you. God bless you and keep you. Do something creative today, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!